Welcome back to NatChat. So Lee, we all know that we're losing a lot of our great actors. I can't say losing them. Some of our big actors are really make it in, making it in Hollywood, mm -hmm. in their hearts, from how they speak. They want to produce great movies out of Australia. Um, but it's, it is sometimes difficult. You know, we have foreign movies coming in, but right now our dollar is strong, which on one hand it's good, but then that puts a lot of the foreign investors off. So this is the areas that you also look into apart from producing yourself. So yeah. um, just love to talk about the different range and options with movie making. Can we yeah, I look, I think um, with the financial crisis of the last two years too, so budgets are going to be harder to come by, uh -huh. certainly private investors, because a lot of those guys who had that wealth don't have that wealth now. Uh -huh. They certainly don't have that extra money just to, to punt at a film. Mm. So you have to be very much more particular. And I think um, there is an opportunity then, because as I said earlier, in Australia we are able to produce films lesser than, say, in Hollywood. Even though our dollar has a parity... Lesser our, because of location, lesser in I think sense. I think our crew costs are probably less than, certainly in the in California and places like that mm -hmm. where they work to a higher rate. Okay. Um, and I think, um, you know, we just tend to work smaller than and a bit more adaptable. Mm -hmm. We have multitasking. We'll have a lot of people who will do a lot of things on set, as okay. I understand, in, certainly in LA, as against the non-union states mm -hmm. over there. If you do this job, that's the job you do and you don't do anything else. Whereas on our set, it's kind of like hands in, everybody will help. Sure, right. they have their particular bit mm -hmm. that they're doing, but they will help out. So. I see it as an opportunity. I see, I see the opportunity being okay. Come up with some commercial idea. Come up with very commercial ideas that mm -hmm. aren't just. They don't have to be quintessential Australian stories either. They just have to be great stories. Mm -hmm. Number one, great stories. I always like the thing about Hollywood makes great stories. You know, Hollywood made Robin Hood X number of times. It right. ain't set in America, but uh -huh. it's a great story. Yeah. I think it's about stories. Mm -hmm. And if a great, if there's a great Australian story, and we've had them, Crocodile Dundee is a great Australian story and it worked and it made hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm. But if you're going to make very small stories that the market aren't interested in, then that's where you run into trouble. And a lot of our films are very intro like that. Mm. And I think they should be broader and I think the idea should be broader. And because we do have, like you say, a lot of actors and actresses working overseas who would love to work here, mm. you can put great, those great people into great stories here and shoot them here. There's no, uh -huh. no reason why. You know, you can have Russell Crowe, you can have Hugh Jackman, any of those guys, Kate Blanchett, and all those sort of people would love to work here if there's the right scripts. And then, and that's really talking maybe even to the big studios and saying, here's a script, mm -hmm. it's a great story, and we can have these guys mm -hmm. in it and, and do that. Um, I guess a great success is, is George Miller's Mad Max is, yeah. is about to go to number four. Mm. Um, not an essential Australian story mm. by any means. Yeah. It's a story of anybody, anywhere, mm. you know, cars crashing and things like that. And, I and, think and that's a point. So when we know one big movie's here, there's like some 50 billion people, you know, trying to be positioned in a film and it's really tough. And I mean, I, I think, you know, it's one thing bringing overseas actors in, you know, which yep. of course sometimes is absolutely necessary. But there's also a thing, I don't know, it, it's a union and sometimes there's almost separation on sets, you know, because with the unions in America, you mm -hmm. know, you, they have to be flown in, whether it be first class, you know, sure. I don't know, business class, and then, you know, there's a whole pecking order, which, you know, is, it has to be like so hurtful for people, Australian people working on sets. I mean, I don't know if I'm talking out of line, but mm. I mean, there's, there's this sort of pecking order when you're talking about these products productions that you do, everyone chipping in, you're all yeah. equal, you're just trying to get the job done and sure. you know I think there's such a hunger for that sort of product here. Yeah, I, I agree totally. Um, mm. um, I mean I've just watched The Pacific which mm. was came in Australia two years ago, 18 months ago, very mm. big production and you've seen guys like Bill Hunter and different people like that with mm. one or two lines in that. Now whether they had mm. more or not and they probably did but that were cut down but very much supporting Mm. very, you know, almost like extra, you know, mm. two-line extra sort of thing. Um, but, you know, as I said, you could have, with the right story, um, Wolverine, instead of being shot in New Zealand, could have been shot here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's Hugh Jackman. Um, mm. The stories with Russell, Robin Hood could have been shot here. The new Robin mm. Hood could have been shot here. So why do you think they're not? Is there not the powers that be? No one yeah, cares well, I, enough? I, I think, number one, if you took Robin Hood to the 
Screen Australia, they go, are you kidding me? Right, okay. Um, because they do have some guidelines about Australian story and things like that. But mm -hmm. I think number one should be commercial story mm. and how that works in an Australian context doesn't really, it's, a, it's, the, it's the economy of how you do things. It's, yes. You know, you, you're playing on a, a world market, a world stage, and you know, America is a great market to go into, but mm. Europe is, is a twice as big a market mm. as America to oh, play yeah. into. Yeah. Um, so if you're doing stories with universal themes and things, mm. um, they, should, they can work anywhere. So tell, tell me, I am sort of haven't been focusing on it of recent, but what's happening down at the Docklands? Are there any productions being done there or is that um, finished or what's happened It's down been there? quiet. I think it's been hard to get for the reason you mentioned before because that is straight a dollar thing. Uh -huh. If you can get a studio here for less than you can get it over there, okay. it's much, it's, it, you'll do it here. But when it's the same here, it's easier for them to work there than it is here because mm. you know, if it's an American film they're trying to create America, mm. hard to create it in downtown Melbourne. Can do it. It's been mm. done many times. But um, I think there's a, there's a big English project about to come in here called The Killer Elite, which is okay. at the studios. Mm -hmm. Fritz Gepsy is based out of the studios at the moment doing um, Eye of the Storm, but he's not mm -hmm. shooting at the studios. Mm -hmm. And that's because they probably don't have the budget to shoot there. Mm. Those studios are very expensive. Mm. Local productions can't afford to shoot there. Mm. You just don't have that budget. So mm. we end up shooting in warehouses and factories. Okay. And really the very big projects tend to go into that, that studio. I mean, I think there was an opportunity to make mm. that available to anybody mm. and, you know, set up production offices and things like that where maybe that mm. became a hub for Australian filmmakers or Victorian filmmakers to, mm. to work from. And that would have been a really great thing because that would create a vibe in the mm. industry around a central hub. The industry we have here now is like spread out from one place to the other. People are just trying to string things together. And some of those are supported by government and, and Film Victoria and, and what they do. Others are supported by their other livings, which is making commercials and things like that, which is what I do. Mm. Um, but you know, if you had a central hub that had a central kind of vibe of what the industry is, mm. people could work off those sorts of things, and mm. you could sit around and there'd be editors and musicians and things like that. I think that would be really cool. It's like the studio system in, mm. in LA, where you've got bungalows around and Steven Spielberg's offices over here and Tom Hanks is over there. Mm. I think that would be a really great environment. So tell me, out of the different states, say you know Sydney, Melbourne, Queensland, um, you know I don't know if there's mm -hmm. any studio in Perth. You know I'm just aware of you know those three particularly. Certainly up the east coast, we have big studios in Sydney, the Fox Studios, and mm. Warner Brothers in Queensland, mm. and and Queensland always seems, seems to have those sort of American type projects in there. Mm. And I think that's through a throughput deal with Warner Brothers. It's mm. branded as Warner Brothers. So I think that's kind of like why mm. they do that. Uh, Sydney, we know Star Wars was shot there and the Matrix and, mm. and different projects. So, um, but Melbourne is fighting for those same projects. So right. it's whoever can make the best package, I guess, financially mm. for those producers kind of so, wins So, I mean, we as the people, what can we do? Is there anything, I mean, do, you know, people go, go to school, to, you know, to study their craft, um, you know? Look, I, there's no shortage of talent. Yes. There's lots of great, and it's proof because most of that talent is working all over the world. Mm. Um, I think it's more developing ideas with the scripts, making uh -huh. sure those scripts are workable, that they're not so insular, mm. and, and kind of, I guess we get caught in a trap where we go, oh, okay, we can't raise a lot of money, and I see this all the time, where people make a movie and they'll shoot the movie for whatever they can get, and... Mm. And generally, it just doesn't come up to scratch mm. because, at the end of the day, a DVD with Lethal Weapon 6 that costs $400 yeah. million dollars against mm. a movie that costs $1 million, dollars, what are you going to hire? Yeah. You're go for the whole right. thing. All right. Well, it's been a great, uh, actually, it's been great seeing you actually, right. yeah, being able to interview you. We've known yeah. each other for so long. long. Time, yeah. So, um, hope you enjoyed being my guest. I loved it. It was great fun. And um, thank you for watching Nat Chat. If you'd like to watch this show or any other shows, you can find us on our website. So this is Judy Green and I'll be seeing you again next week. Bye.